Hello, my name is Dan Parisi, Editor-in-Chief with Commercial Integrator, welcoming you to AV Plus, the podcast for the commercial AV integration industry. I'm so happy to be joined today by members of the Sharp NEC Display Solutions Brain Trust. In particular, we're joined by Jody Baines, Manager, Strategic Partnership Development, and Sonia Lobo, Product Marketing Specialist. We're here today to talk about Navisense and more broadly to talk about exciting developments in areas like computer vision and data-centric AV. I think it'll be a very illuminating podcast. I'm super excited to share it with everyone on the AV Plus channel. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the podcast. As always, please like and subscribe to our YouTube page and please subscribe to the AV Plus podcast on Apple and on Spotify. So happy to be joined today by two members of the Sharp NEC Display Solutions Brain Trust, Jody Baines, Manager, Strategic Partnership Development, and Sonia Lobo, Product Marketing Specialist. Both of them are here today on the AV Plus podcast to talk about Navisense, its unique value proposition. Thank you so much, Jody. Thank you so much, Sonia, for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Happy to be here. Thanks, Dan. So let's get right into it because there's a lot to discuss. We're gonna be talking about some pretty cutting edge concepts today. Computer vision as a means of gathering and analyzing audience attributes, things like that. So to start, and before we even really get into Navisense per se, uh, could you offer kind of a high level overview of computer vision, its potential to improve operations, logistics, customer experiences, sales? This might be very familiar to Sharp NEC, but I wanna make sure everyone is kind of oriented in space before we get into the nitty gritty. So computer vision is a form of artificial intelligence that allows computer to see the world and identify and process objects the same way that humans would. So they process these objects um, on videos and images and all that. So um, to your question, how this can improve areas of operations, logistics, and customers' experience and service is that um, it's way more accurate than having a human doing these things and as well as like it's ever learning. The more data that these um, computer visions are, are seeing, the more it's analyzing and it's, it's getting smarter and smarter. And it eliminates human error like due to fatigue and other factors where it's the same repetitive tasks over and over. So it sounds like they're really kind of two key things that make computer vision especially powerful. The idea is it, it can process more information with more precision than a human can. And it also can kind of build on its own learning and accelerate its own efficacy over time. It's not a static thing. It actually can self-improve, so to speak. Is, is that kind of a fair way of describing it? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, I, I would I would say you know like to take an example right if um, if you want to know how long the wait time is like in a store or a bank branch, um, you could have somebody sitting there watching that all the time, but that's very inefficient and inaccurate as as Sonia said. You know, a computer vision system could watch the wait time in a line, and then when it sees the wait time is exceeding a threshold, it could alert somebody that that wait time has been exceeded, and you could take action. Um, what's even more powerful about it is you're collecting that data about the wait time and you're putting that in a central area. So you can then collect the wait times going on in all of your branches, in all of your stores. And then you can do analysis and look for trends and you can start saying this particular location has a wait time issue pretty much Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock every week. And you can start making business decisions with that data. And that's where a lot of the real power comes from. So understanding that power now, that, that capacity to make better, more effective business decisions, I'd like to kind of plow into Navisense itself. I want to make sure the AV Plus podcast audience knows exactly what Navisense is. My understanding is Sharp NEC kind of took the knowledge it had gained from previous products and essentially learning what people wanted, learning what people might not have wanted quite as much, and using that information, that intelligence to tailor Navisense. So talk a little bit about its creation, its, its inception, and then also what it is. Yeah, 
So some of our current viewers right now might be familiar with our previous analytics platform. And um, we learned a lot about our customers and the market from that platform. But Navisense is brand new. We built it from the ground up, you know, Jody and Kelly from day one. Um, the main difference with this and what we've pretty much been seeing in the market is that it's cost effective. Uh, you need a USB camera, logic to camera, um, and Raspberry Pi computing, as well as SDM. It's very easy to use. It's plug and play. And also it's at the edge computing. Um, so those are the three main factors that go into Navisense. And also it, um, the data can be exported with open REST API and with the JSON standard data format. So very, very informative. And I, I love the fact that, as you say, uh, you know, Sharp NEC had had existing products. And then you, you as, as I had mentioned earlier, kind of navigated what people's feedback was, took that feedback into account, tried to be directly responsive, tried to be agile enough that in creating Navisense, you were responsive to those concerns, responsive to people's needs, and created something that really seems like it's kind of custom tailored to the market. You gave us some, some top line information about, you know, Navisense sense in terms of its organization, but would you like to dive a little bit deeper into its architecture, its benefits, for example, you know, how exactly edge computing devices factor in, as well as elements of customization and scalability as far as the analytics go? Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of industry buzzwords, right? You know, edge computing, internet of things and the like, and this can all add up to, to make, you know, a fairly simple concept seem very complex. But really, edge computing is, is just computing at the source. So where you're gathering the data. You know, in our case, uh, a lot of our new displays, our M series, ME series have computing slots in them where we can put in cards like for um, Intel smart display modules or um, Raspberry Pi cards for Raspberry Pi 4. You know, so over the past few years, uh, computing as it does has become more and more powerful and smaller, right? And uh, so what we have then is an architecture where we have displays, you tend to put displays where people are. So it made sense to us to say, okay, well, what can we do with that computing power within these displays? And we, we basically worked with a partner, Guy's AI, and said, can you run some of these advanced computer vision models on a Raspberry Pi? And they spent a few weeks and came back to us and said, yes, we can. We can do a certain number of models on that. And for other models that may require more computing power, we could use the Intel SDM. Um, so with that in mind, and after talking to our customers based on previous projects, you know, a lot of our customers really wanted data. They wanted to be able to you know, understand what was going on in their world. You know what their customers were doing, how long they were waiting. You know lifestyle information about their customers, like what kind of brands did they like, and such. So when we built this architecture out, we went with it from this perspective of edge computing. So the computing is taking place within the display. Um, it's married to a very simple camera. It can be a USB camera. Uh, we can use a Raspberry Pi camera in certain instances. We could use existing cameras. Um, that a customer might already have set up depending on the angle and the, and the use case. Um, the advantage of doing this at the edge is it gets us away from having, you know, maybe you have a small store location or a branch location. Uh, maybe you don't have room for a server room in there with a bunch of computing. Uh, this allows us to offload that computing to that Internet of Thing thing, like our display, right? And the computing takes place very quickly at the edge and then it sends it where you want it. So it can send it to a data center, to your data center. It can send it to your cloud and put that in a data store, which then allows you to do dashboarding and further analysis. So, you know, it gives us a lot of flexibility that way. Plus, from a scalability standpoint, since the computing is being done at the edge, um, you know, you don't have to have the big powerful server everywhere. You can have that processing divided up in all of your different locations. It's done there and then it's sent to a, a specific location that you want. So it allows us to scale very easily. 
and I think that that's such an important element, that scalability. So uh, it, you know, harnessing that power and kind of diffusing it in a sense, not having it all centralized is, is a really important element to underscore. The other thing that I think is worth underscoring is that Navisense, at least to my understanding, and let me know if, if I'm correct, uh, Jody and Sonia, is that it will continue to evolve. It won't ever be quote unquote finished. Can you share Sharp NEC's perspective on why it's important that Navisense be ever changing, be forever evolving, be agile and nimble enough to change. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, you know, if you think about it, right, the world is ever changing, right? Um, technology is ever changing. Uh, you know, a, a few years ago, the uh, the thing that people wanted to do with computer vision, um, especially in, in our industry, uh, they were very interested in understanding age and gender of customers and then triggering content one on one to those customers based on the age and gender that the system saw, right? Um, you know, nowadays you, you still see that, but it's more of a sensitive topic, right? And, you know, you, 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 I think it's difficult for any system to decide that, um, well, this person is this age and this gender, therefore they're gonna be interested in this item. So we're gonna put that content up there to try to trigger some response. You know, I, I think our customers have told us they really want more about what's going on in their world. And I mentioned this before. So the, the cool thing about um, this edge computing approach, about um, the ability of working with a partner like guys, is they can pretty much build a model for anything the human eye could detect. So we're only limited by the imagination and the business use cases of our customers that way. So as long as we're listening to them on what's important to them, we should be able then to produce solutions that help them achieve their business outcomes. And that's really what it's all about for Sharp NEC, right? Trying to create solutions that are custom tailored to help clients and customers achieve their business outcomes. It seems like that's really kind of core to your organizational DNA. Yep, absolutely, right? It's, uh, I mean, you exist you know, to the point that you're able to provide solutions that customers are willing to buy, right? And, uh, and that's really the whole approach we took with this. We spent a lot of time using a design thinking approach to understand what our customers wanted, um, what our partners wanted, right? And how to make them successful. And this was really built from the ground up around that process and is continuing to evolve with that by getting feedback from our partners and our customers on the solution. And that's why we made it our mission to be forever evolving because like Jody mentioned, customer needs evolve, business needs evolve. So we need to be prepared for that and, uh, for the future. Well said, I, I completely agree. Um, I, I don't want Sharp NEC to give away any secrets on the AV Plus podcast. Well, I'd love for you to give away secrets on the podcast, but I don't expect you to. Um, can you provide any insight into the future roadmap that's already in place for Navisense? What some of the guideposts along the way might be for its ongoing development? Because my sense is, and let me know if I'm wrong, that you have a pretty well established roadmap, a pretty strong vision for where this is going. Sure. Yeah, we um, we have a number of models that are available at launch, and, and we just really officially launched it at the Infocom show. Um, but, you know, we do have models in mind, right, that we're currently working on that we're training and building up. Now, what's, what's interesting about that, and, and we've talked about this, is um, once you put something out there, the customers will tell you if you're hitting the mark or not, as long as you're listening to them. Um, and, you know, we already have new ideas just from Infocom where customers have come up and said, could we, that's cool, but could we do this thing? So, you know, we're going back to our partner saying, can we do that thing? Does it make sense? Does it make business sense? Is this something for just this one customer or could it apply broadly across the a market vertical? Um, so I think you're going to see over, you know, the, the next few months, um, some new models coming out, um, maybe some new sensor types. Uh, we're still exploring all of that and looking at what makes sense in the market. Um, you know, again, the cool thing is computing continues to evolve. So as we get, you know, new, more powerful chips, uh, it allows us to do, uh, you know, new types of analysis 
And, uh, and so we're, we're expecting we're going to continue to go down that road and, and broaden out the category as well as the, uh, the depth of the offering. Something that I always have loved about the commercial AV industry is the amount of, of innovation that we see, whether it's integrators going to vendors and saying, I love your product. What about making it suitable for this kind of an application or end users going to integrators and saying, well, I love what you've done with this system, but how about broadening it out to accomplish this? It, it always seems like people are pushing each other up and down the channel to come up with new innovative approaches. And it seems like that's something that's very much uh, that Navisense is, is built for and the Chart Benny see as attuned to the idea of fostering and encouraging that intra-channel integration mm -hmm. yeah i you know i think when you when you talk about um these partnerships right you know a good partnership is is taking uh your unique capabilities your technology um your ability to deliver that marrying that with a partner's unique capabilities and technology um with the with the focus on delivering um, a solution that lets our customers achieve their business outcomes, right? I guess I guess that's pretty wordy. Um, you know, it, it's a lot. I guess I'm saying it's a lot more than just you know us shaking hands and saying, you know, let's sell together, <laughs> right? Right. This all has to have this genesis at what are our customers trying to achieve, right? And and like you say, Dan, the uh, the 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 neat thing about it is our partners come to us and they say that is really cool. Uh, could it do this thing with our thing and we could achieve this outcome, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, as long as we're really focused on our customers and what they're trying to achieve, then, you know, it, it may make sense to work together on that. And then from that perspective, that customer should have that experience of working with us and our partner that, um, or our partners, that they're dealing with one collective. I, I, don't, I hate to say the word, the phrase hive mind, you know, some, <laughs> but, you know, if they talk to me or, or they talk to someone at one of our partners, they're talking about the same solution, right? Um, and uh, they know that the customer knows that we, we have them in mind when we're, we're proceeding. Right, right. So, so Jody, Sony, I think you've both kind of alluded in your own way to Sharp NEC's partner centricity. Um, and, and in our initial conversations, even before we went live on the podcast, we were talking about how committed Sharp NEC is organizationally to partnerships. And just to kind of to button that up and expand on it just a little bit before we move on, um, I, I'd like to hear from your perspective the kinds of partnerships that Sharp NEC organizationally is looking for. My, my sense is that you're looking for real reciprocity where they're leaning into you, where you have the opportunity to lean into them, where it, it, it's not just, as you say, like a marriage of convenience or we're just trying to sell products, but it's really something centered on organizations leaning into building on the strengths of each other and finding ways to deliver the outstanding outcomes that clients and customers deserve and expect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you can have, and, and this is not uncommon in the, uh, in the technology industry, right? You can have a lot of technology partners where you have integrations, right? So this thing is compatible with this thing. Right, and that's important for customers to know that they can buy that kind of thing, and that's that's one kind of partnership. But a much deeper level of partnership is when you are talking on a fairly regular basis about, you know, again, our capabilities, their capabilities, you know, a joint solution that really addresses what customers are trying to achieve. Um, and yeah, that requires that requires some amount of work, and it requires a lot of communication, right, between us and with the customer so that we know that we're hitting the mark with that. And that's really what we're looking for um, when we talk solutions partnerships, right? Uh, you know, so when you're talking about a solution, it could be a, a very simple solution between a partner or two, or it could have a, a bunch of partners working together with us to achieve, you know, what that, that solution is. And uh, so we're looking for partners that want that kind of relationship that are gonna go the long haul, right? It, that it's not just for this project, just for this customer, but something that that can last and provide lasting value. Yeah, and the yeah, thing I would add yeah. is too, like working towards a mutual goal, you know, partnerships that you both have your goals aligned and you're both putting forth the effort and all that. And we saw that at Infocom um, with our solutions there with 
Spectral, Pick and Watch, and Guys AI, as well as La Machia. They were all at our booth. They were working, we were all working hard. It, it, we've, everyone thought that we were all on the same team, you know, for the same company. So that's what a real partnership is. Absolutely. On the same team, as though you're all part of one cohesive organization or one cohesive unit. Um, that's the essence of a strong partnership. And you, you teed me up perfectly, Sonia, because my next question is about La Machia Group, um, which is a, a well-respected consultation design build firm catering specifically in most cases to financial institutions. My understanding is they bought in on the ground floor with Navisense in terms of its development, and they've been able to marshal its power to really enrich clients' data access and their analytics. Would either of you, Sonia or uh, Jody, like to talk about your partnership with Lamakia Group? Um, sure. Yeah, we um, we actually when we, we came up with the idea for Navisense, um, one of the early things that we did, um, you know, outside of talking to our, our existing customers, um, was we talked to our sales team and we said, you know, how how do we, you know, make this valuable for partners? How do we help you know, integrators uh, provide new offerings? And with that in mind, what integrators, what, what partners should we be talking with, right? Um, so one of our, our folks, um, and we got a bunch of suggestions and we started looking at them. One of our folks had brought up Lamakia Group as, as a company that, that he thought was a, a really good partner, um, someone that, uh, that had a, a unique offering in their vertical, which, you know, is... Uh, uh, financial, their financial design builds so they can build like credit union branches and provide new experiences for credit union customers. Um, and by chance, we had actually met them of uh, like a couple of years previous at, uh, at a show in Europe. And they had been interested in a, a previous uh, computer vision uh, solution that we had. Um, so it just seemed natural to talk to them. So uh, we got in touch with Tim Klatt at Lamakia. Um, and very early on said, this is the concept of, of what we're thinking about bringing out, you know, does it make sense? Um, is it something that would be usable for you? And if so, how would it be usable? And how, you know, can you give us some ideas on, on how we should kind of lay this out? So uh, very early on, you know, Tim and Lamacchio were very interested in it. And we established this relationship where we had ongoing calls and we kept them in the loop as we were going down the road with Navisense. And they gave us feedback the whole way through. So by the time we got to the point where we were ready to begin testing it in the field, they had already talked to some of their customers and positioned it with them. You know? So we already had a couple of uh, credit unions that were their customers that were very interested in trying out some of the early models. Um, so as soon as we came out with it, they put it out in the field and then we started getting feedback. You know, the neat thing about this is the, you know, Lamakia knew up front that new product is going to have hiccups. They were also able to tell their customers that new product is going to have hiccups. You know, everyone has to communicate and we can build this into something that will be really usable and valuable. Um, so that's how we've progressed. And now we're at the point where the product is commercialized. Those early customers now are ready to expand their use of it and start placing orders for it. And you know we have a field tested design um, in working with an integration partner that provides value for their business and their customer's business. So I, I think it's really been a model for how these things should work. And really, I, and, and I've told Tim at Lamakia that, that you know, it's a template for how our partnerships should be going forward. Asa, the, the bar high, definitely. Exciting stuff. Yeah. And, and just talking about another key partnership, I want to get into something that you mentioned, Sonia, Spectrio and Pick and Watch. From what, I, from what I understand, at least that partnership really kind of centers on benefits like evaluating customer dwell time and then taking it to the next level by actually triggering content based on customer actions. For example, playing a video of someone were to pick up an athletic shoe or something like that. Could either of you tell me a little bit about that partnership with Spectrio and Pick and Watch? Sure. So at Infocom, we what you just mentioned, we display that as a complete solution story. So at our booth, um, the very first thing you see after you, you check in 
is our active scene display. So active scene is a technology that goes from opaque, transparent, and it shows advertisements. So uh, we had set up a retail skate shop. So as you, that's what dr draws you into the shop, all the advertisement. And then on top of the active scene display, there was a camera, uh, a navigation camera capturing dwell time. So how long people are standing in front of the advertisement, how long they're engaged. And as they go around the corner where Spectrio and Pick and Watch was, there was another Navisense camera that was capturing traffic, people count. So how, um, how many people go in and out of, of a store and all that. So it was keeping track of that. And then uh, to what you were saying, the the triggering advertisement so that was spectral and pick and watch our, our partners that um, we had three different skate shoes we have a new balance and adidas and a nike and then each one of them had a pick and watch bluetooth tag inserted in them so how it worked is as soon as uh, one of the customers came and picked up the shoe it triggered advertisement specific for that shoe. So if you pick up the Nike, all you're going to see is Nike advertisement. And then in that screen, there was an, a third Navisense camera that was capturing logo detection. So what people were wearing, um, if they were wearing Nike, Adidas, and all of that. So it was great because we noticed that the, the pick and watch dashboard, that all the Navisense data was feeding the information to, it was getting smarter and smarter as the show progressed. So it was updating in near real-time data. And like I mentioned before, our partnerships have been amazing. They were there at the booth. They were there working alongside of us, answering questions. And it was just a very great experience to have Spectrio, Pick and watch, and as well as La Macchia, they were there as well. So yeah. it, it was a really good story and a good experience. Yeah, and if I if I could add to that too, I you know the the I would love to take credit for this whole concept, but it was Christian Armstrong from Spectrio. We had been talking at at the previous in, Infocom in the fall, um, back in October in Miami or uh, Orlando. Um, we were just showing a little video of the concept of Navisense and, and Christian came to me and said, this is super cool. How do we work together? And so we started talking about that, um, you know, and they have a, Spectrio has a fantastic CMS. Um, and so we were looking for ways that we could work with Navisense and Spectrio. Then um, he came up with this concept. He had seen Pick and Watch at another show. And he said, this would be a really neat concept if we could use Navisense to gather customer attributes um, in a store and then you know, marry that with the actual physical interactions of merchandise in the store um, with Pick and Watch and get that in their dashboard. And you know, it seemed great to us. And he introduced us to Aaron Art from uh, the CEO of Pick and Watch. Um, and we started talking about, is this technically possible? Is this something that has value? You know, and um, you know, meanwhile, they were talking with their customers and saying, yeah, this, this scenario does have value. It's worth doing. And this all happened in a very brief period of time. I think, I think really within, we first started talking about six weeks before Infocom. So, you know, can we do this integration? Can we make everything work together and tie it into a story on the floor? And that came together very quickly. And, uh, you know, as of show day, it was an up and running um, solution that was integrated and people were able to see it. And as Sonia said, our partners were, were in the booth to the point that Aaron, people were asking me who he was and when he had joined our company. Um, <laughs> so, you know, he was doing such a good job of doing everyone's technology together um, that uh, people thought he worked for us. So uh, it, was, it, it was really a, a great story. 
It, it sounds like a great story. I know it was capturing a whole lot of attention there. And, you know, there's a, a lot of, uh, of competition to grab eyes and ears at a show like Infocom. And to grab as much attention as Sharp NEC did, it's a feather in your cap and in your partner's cap and, and Navisense's cap, quite honestly. Um, so we have been talking for about a half hour now. We could talk for an hour more because it's, there's, I love talking about computer vision and this kind of data-centric AV. Um, but just to, to kind of wrap up the conversation or wind it down, I want to talk a little bit about the ongoing cadence of consultation Sharp NEC is engaging in. You've emphasized, you know, that this is an ever-evolving, ever-developing, ever-improving solution Navisense is. My impression is your team probably has calls going on virtually every week with, with partners, industry stakeholders, things of that nature. Do you want to talk about that ongoing consultation and then also just, uh, you know, pinpoint any refinements or improvements that you might be able to, to say is a direct result of that ongoing feedback loop? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, with um, with some of our partners like, like Lamakia, especially, um, you know, we have a weekly cadence with them. It's on the calendar and we get together every week. And sometimes we talk about, you know, uh, very important technical things. Sometimes we talk about what's going to happen for the weekend, but we do talk, right? And that's important, right? Because it's not just about the technology and uh, the solution. It's about our relationship with the partner, right? They, and to the point where really we, we kind of feel like we are part of each other's company <laughs> and, you know, because we have that kind of focus. So, um, you know, you get to a, a certain level of that where, you know, hey, we're coming in town. Great, let's get together. And, you know, those kinds of things, they, they make, they, they put fun in business, right? That's, it's really the, the people aspect that makes it fun. Um, you know, the, the refinements, they come from the customers really, right? So, you know, and, and Lamakia as a partner, they're also a customer, right? So we look at them as, you know, are we providing a solution that they can, build out their bigger solution for to provide value to their customers. Um, so they get feedback from their customers and they come to us and say, you know, it would be easier if we had a better utility for setting up a camera, for instance. So, you know, action items like that build up and we refine the solution around that. So um, a lot of the refinement is um, around making it easier to use, uh, making it easier to deploy and manage um, and, uh, you know, then starting to look at new capabilities as far as, you know, what, what do the customers want out of this? And not just today, but, you know, if we can look ahead six months or a year out, you know, where do we think the market is going for this? And, uh, you know, what are, what are they seeing? You know, how do we have to adjust to, to try to meet those needs that are out there? Um, so, yeah, I, I could, you know, it, the thing is, you know, with, with the partners too, I, the, uh, I think when you're on specific projects, especially early stage like this, there has to be a lot more of those touch base moments, right? Um, maybe after it flows more, you can taper it off a little bit and shorten the calls, but you still need to have the regular touch base so that everyone is engaged and everyone's on the same page. And that does seem so much of a piece with Sharp NEC's NEC Display Solutions DNA that you're very focused on, that ongoing consultation, that ongoing partnership. As you said, it just seems like that that's part of your, your company ethos, the idea of working together, working together meaningfully and closely, all in service of, as you say, delivering the outcomes that our clients need, our clients expect, and uh, you know that, that befit your brand equity and your brand reputation. No, yeah, thanks, Dan. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it's perceived that way. And, uh, you know, I, I think we really do try to, to be an open um, uh, provider, right? Where we're, we're, from a technology standpoint, we're, we're somewhat agnostic, right? We, we want partnerships, we want people's technology and their capabilities to be able to, to work with ours. Um, and, you know, again, and I, I, I know I harp on it, but it's really trying to, you know, keep the customer in mind. And yeah. uh, and achieve help them achieve their business outcomes, and I and I think we're very focused on that. I agree. Well, I'm very appreciative to you, Sonia Lobo, product marketing specialist, and you, Jody Baines, manager, strategic 
partnership development uh, for being part of the AV podcast today. It was a really informative half hour. So I guess, as I say, I love talking about things like computer vision and really kind of revolutionary new introductions like Navisense. I can't wait to see where it goes. Can't wait to see where Sharp NEC and its partners take it. But thank you for the time investment. Thank you for being here. And thank you for educating and informing not only me, but also commercial integrators, entire audience. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thanks a lot, Dan. It was great. Looking forward to seeing everyone back here next week for another edition of the AB Plus podcast. But as we close out, once again, greatest thanks to Jody Baines and Sonia Lobo for educating all of us. And we'll see you back here on commercialintegrator.com really soon. Thanks. <laughs>